We are in Vietnam in the port city of Nha Giang. Come explore with us. Sake is made with rice in Asia, but how about a vodka in America made with rice? We will share some bedlam with you. Plus, a special Pinot Noir we found on a cruise ship. Before we take you to this golf course gem in the Carolinas on an Arnold Palmer design called River's Edge. Undercover Jet Setter is exploring classics with you. Cheers. Welcome, everybody. Cheers. We are coming to you from Vietnam, and we just got back from the amazing port city, Nha Giang. And it's a city, it's a heavenly city, and it's something, if you go, you will adore it. This Vietnamese city has a lot to worship. That's right. The sun, a goddess, and some great food. Nha Giang is a coastal city in central Vietnam. It is a true destination resort filled with beautiful beaches and yummy foods. That's right. Nha Giang has some fabulous beaches attracting sunbathers and vacationers from all over the Pacific. Be sure to bring your sunscreen. The sun is hot. Now, Nha Giang was used as another U.S. Air Force base during the Vietnam War. And the beaches were a big attraction for U.S. military personnel on leave. Like we saw in Da Nang, there are hardly any reminders of the war or the U.S. presence. But Americans are welcomed with open arms and very accepted here. Nijang is booming economically. There is plenty of construction, expecting even more vacationers for the region. It has a modern feel, reflecting the boom of Asia. But don't let that fool you. Nijang has many visuals of the past. Vendors offer fruits, vegetables, and other local foods. Like much of the world, you will see effects of income inequality. Nijang has plenty of ancient history, too. This is a must. The Po Nagar Temple. It was built back in the 10th century, and the architecture is amazing and beautiful. It is Vietnam's second oldest relic, and it is a breathtaking window into the past. It's well worth the journey up the steps to see the wonderful views of the city alone. Now, once up there, you're in a whole different world full of mystery and spiritualism. These Vietnamese people are the ancestors to the people who founded this shrine. They speak a completely different language that most Vietnamese people cannot even understand. Now, their religion is different too. It's a combination of Hindu and Islam. They pay homage to the goddess Cham. And there are plenty of worshippers here. Fresh flowers, fruits, and incense are all part of the tradition. If you visit, be aware of the signs of respect. Women need to make sure they cover up their arms and legs. All visitors need to remove their shoes before entering. Don't worry if you have shorts and a tank on. Free service dress garments are supplied so that everyone can enter the temple and still uphold the respect. Now you can spend a good amount of the day up here. Remember, stay hydrated though. Nha Giang is also a fishing village, and there are many small islands offshore. Now one of the biggest has the Vin Pearl Resort, which is an amusement park. Now if you stay in Nha Giang, for any length of time, locals say it is worth your stay. Nha Giang also offers some good deals. There are five-star resorts that go anywhere from $100 to $150 U.S. per night. Restaurants are very affordable, too. We hit the appropriately named Nha Giang View Restaurant, and it has some spectacular views to gaze at while you eat. That's right. It's a tranquil place to escape, and the food is delicious, too. Like the rest of Vietnam, it is all about freshness and simplicity. Vegetables, white rice, and fresh fish. But unlike Da Nang or Chiang Mai, we found the fare here not as spicy. This meat dish filled with fresh onions and peppers actually had the feel of many American Chinese dishes. That smells incredible. really good it's so amazing the beef is so tender almost like melting in your mouth really good mm. not spicy no I wouldn't say so it's got a little pepper in it but not I wouldn't say too spicy it's very fresh it's still very light even though it's got the meat very light tasty we also had this very fresh grouper fish mm. Oh, that's really good. Grouper. Oh, yeah. No, oh, grouper. Oh, very good. Nice. Cool. And we also had two soups. One with tomatoes, pineapples, and fresh cut herbs like basil and lemongrass. And this delicate fish soup. Now, these greens were delightful and, again, not too spicy. A nice accompaniment to the beef dish. 
and this beautiful salad with cold noodles was refreshing on a steamy hot day. You will come away from a Vietnamese meal feeling satisfied, but never full or fat. As is common in Vietnam, scooters are the way to get around for locals and brave tourists. And we have some tips for you when you visit Vietnam that we got from our friend Kit. First, learn some key phrases, as our guide Kit tells us. He spent much time in Vietnam since marrying into a Vietnamese family and speaks the language fluently. Simple language, uh, uh, Vietnam language, to greet them like chin chow, ăn cơm is like uh, having a, a, a meal, or we actually ăn cơm is eating rice, but we use it as a term of having meals. So just a few simple Vietnamese language will make the people really, really happy and uh, a lot more acceptable. Cool, and, and so chin chow, what, what, what does chin chow mean? Chin chow means hello, good day, it's a lot of meaning, it means something good for and everyone. Thank you, and thank you is come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. Ah, okay, yeah. very good. Well, Kit, come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. To you. Come on is everything, it's all in the package. All right. Come on. Once you have the language down, beware of the traffic and crossing streets. There are not many stoplights here, but there are plenty of scooters, and you can cross the street while dodging traffic. Proceed slowly by putting up your hand to the traffic, but always keep moving forward or stop. Never retreat backwards. This is what we are instructed to remain safe. Whether you travel here by cruise ship or plane, Najang is a relaxing seaside escape that you will enjoy and you'll definitely want to return again. And here, as in all of Vietnam, we found the people lovely, kind, and incredibly beautiful. And we we really enjoyed Na Jang. Hopefully I said it right. Um, but for, for some of you who are looking for like the history of Vietnam, um, these are more resort towns. This is, this is the vacation area that a lot of people in Asia go to. So if you're looking for, for the history of Vietnam, really you need to go to Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City, uh, or Hanoi to really relive and discover what's going on there because there's a, a lot of things um, that are happening there as well that are, uh, that are, you know, for someone who's culturally and historically minded, they're going to want to take a look at. So think about that as well. Vietnam's a much bigger country than people realize. Oh, absolutely. It's so, so true. Lots more to discover. And we are still on the ship when we come back and we found an amazing wine bar. And at this wine bar, we found, well, kind of an amazing find that we have to share with you. You may not have noticed, but the majority of Undercover Jet Setter is shot on the iPhone. So that means you can create your own TV show, or you may want to have great vacation videos. Well, we've made it easier for you with our book. It's called The TV Studio In Your Hand. It is a quick read, and you can get it here. So bring us along for your next vacation video or your new TV show. So we discovered a fantastic wine bar on this ship. And at this wine bar, we also found an incredible Pinot Noir. And cheers everybody. Here is the little surprise that we promised you. It is actually, it's a, a Pinot Noir that we found on a cruise ship. In fact, we are still on the cruise ship right now. And um, this was a, a real pleasant surprise. Oh, absolutely. And there's the wine bar back there that we discovered it in thanks to a great sommelier that works back there. And you know what, this was a true treat. We had no idea because the Wagner family, the family that we love that does Mer Soleil, Mayomi, all of these great wines, conundrum that we've tried, true, tested, know and love with all of you, also made this wine. And we've never tasted it before. And he introduced it to us and it's amazing. It's a Pinot Noir, thanks to the Wagner family, and it's called Belle Gloss. And you will see the bottle here. It's truly phenomenal. And it really is a whole different brand for them. But they've done yet again a Wagner family thing that they always do, which is take something tried and true and then just change it up a little bit to make it even better than what it normally would be. And it's true because this is a Pinot Noir that is, and we've talked about this before, about being a traditional Pinot Noir. Light looking, having that 
distinctive Pinot taste. This has the distinctive Pinot feel. You can feel it in your mouth, and you mentioned that to me first. Um, you do get the Pinot taste, but there's more to it. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and, and for so long, you and I have been saying, you know, we don't want a Pinot that tastes like a Merlot. This actually has a little bit of that in it. Yeah, well, it's, it's almost even like when you first look at it, and look at it, you would not think this is a Pinot. You first look at it, and it's so dark and ruby red, it looks like a Cab Sav. It looks like a Cabernet Sauvignon. It does not look like a Pinot, and that's what's so tricky about it. And we it discussed this like with the sommelier. Yeah, if you smell it and you don't swirl it, when you swirl it, it brings out the Pinot essence and the Pinot bouquet. So once you swirl it, then you start to smell the Pinot bouquet. Yeah, and it's, it's tricky because uh, mm -hmm. it, it's not necessarily, it's deceptive. It's not what you would think it would be. So you swirl it, then you get that Pinot, but then you taste it, uh, the mouthfeel of it is what we were, you just mentioned mm -hmm. and what we were discussing. The mouthfeel of it is so like a Pinot. So you get that like smoothness, that silkiness, that Pinot Noir-ness. And then when you when you feel that and you taste it, you really know that that's what it is. Um, you, you, however, don't get the earthy, you don't get the earthy tannin -y feel that you would get from a, from a cab. No, or a, not at all. Or a Merlot, yeah. And the beauty of it is too, is that the more you're drinking it, the better it gets. Mm -hmm. It's so delicious. Mm -hmm. And the other thing it does, which um, which I think is what Asamalye pointed out. His name is we, Nicola, by the way. Yes, Nicola. He, we, we discussed with him the fact of why would this be so, and he thinks they macerated it longer, which we'll can go into that later, later on, and um, explain all that to you in another they show. They mash the grapes more. <laughs> That's all okay, they do. we'll just reveal it now. <laughs> <laughs> the grapes are mashed longer and for a longer amount of time, and harder mashing at the end of the day. So being that happening and that as it may, that is what we think in his theory and in our theory, and we don't know this for sure, Wagner family confirm with us if this is right or wrong, but that's what's caused this phenomenon of this. It's, it's a little bit pricey. It's it's not it's not something you're just going to buy for ten dollars off the shelf. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a little bit more. It's gonna, probably going to open the forty dollar range. At the same time, too, it's it can go with so many different things. I mean, this this whole this could this would definitely yeah. hold up to a lamb. It might even hold up to a steak. Yeah, that's what we were saying. Uh, definitely a roasted chicken be phenomenal with. I mean, you know, we we had some lamb at Jamie Oliver's restaurant here from New Zealand. That was delicious. I think this, this would have been phenomenal. Yeah. Yes, this would go great with it. Now, appetizers, entrees to dessert, you could have this. It's so good. And then the bottle is also really gorgeous. We're going to show it Super to you. Super gorgeous. Just lift it up here so you can kind of get it. Look what they did with this gorgeous wax. I mean, it's like talk they about stole creative. It from, they stole it from Maker's Mark. Oh. No, not really. So. I love it. I love it. I love the whole thing. I love the font they used. It's so Pinot-ish. So, cheers Dude. from Ovation of the Seas and Vintage's Wine Bar. Thanks for joining us. Bell Gloss. So if you get a chance, check out that wine. And when we come back, we will take you to a vodka that is made from rice, but it's not from Asia. We're going to give you a little bit of bedlam. celebrity event in Wilmington, North Carolina, and you discovered an amazing vodka. That's right. It's not the typical vodka you'd expect, but this was this was a good one, and uh, it created a lot of bedlam. <laughs> so we are swinging and swilling our way at the Wilmywood Celebrity Golf Tournament in Wilmington, North Carolina. And one of the sponsors is Bedlam Vodka. So we took a try, and wow, what a great and unique taste for a vodka. Now, was it infused? Nope. We have a rice vodka, one of the few rice vodkas in the world, and because it's made from rice, it has a natural sweetness and a natural, uh, some people say a vanilla or chocolate, 
but a, a natural flavor. We don't flavor our vodka at all. We don't add anything to it. We mash. We make it all in-house. We do it straight from grain to glass. We mash it, we ferment it, we distill it. Only distilled twice, and it's crazy smooth. Which makes Bedlam stand out from other vodkas. Well, so most vodkas, you get a corn, you get a potato, you get some other type of grain, and then you get it distilled a bunch of times, which pulls all the flavor out of it. And tourney attendees said they were also liking the side effects. And uh, for the most part, the people are saying you're not getting a hangover from this. Well, because of the fine cuts that we make when we distill it, it's a much purer alcohol. It's, it's, we don't have the heads and the tails, which are the stuff that you don't want in your alcohol. We, we cut it really fine, and, and we have a computer that actually does it. It's not naturally done. So everything is done to the book and is not meant to make mass production. It's meant to be a generally high, top shelf at a low price vodka. Corey says it is a better vodka to mix rather than infuse. Um, I think it does better in cocktails itself because in other vodka cocktails you're trying to hide that antiseptic, that rubbing alcohol burn, whereas with rice you get more of a sweetness like we were saying, so we can make, we have more fun with the cocktails. We do a, a rice, I mean a vodka uh, old fashioned, which I've never even heard of before I worked for this company, and it because it has that natural sweetness it kind of opens up like a whiskey. And we do weird cocktails, we do rum cocktails, tequila cocktails, we do all different stuff because we're not trying to hide that flavor. We're not trying to hide that grindy, burn down your chest sort of feel. I tried it with a Bloody Mary the next morning. Superb. Ah, that's good. Bedlam is sold in only a few states right now. In all ABC stores all around North Carolina, we are also in South Carolina, Georgia, and New Jersey. It was, actually, it was smooth and uh, it had just a, just a touch of extra sweetness that you wouldn't normally get from a vodka. But it was great. It was really ah, good. Very sweet. I can't wait to try it. And when we come back, we hit a golf course that's not too far away from where you had the Bedlam. That's right. It's called River's Edge and we're going to show you one of the cool holes that River's Edge has. Welcome back. Now, North Carolina has so many great golf courses and a lot of them tough too. And one of them is in Shalot, even though it looks like Shallot. That's right. And just like the name, this course called River's Edge, you need a lot of local knowledge. The sounds of River's Edge Golf Club are only matched by the scenery. The views are spectacular. I mean, you couldn't match them up with anything. At some points, they're a little bit distracting. I mean, you're, you have to control yourself and think about what you're actually doing because you're looking at such beautiful views. Two of our undercover operatives reviewed this spectacular layout along the Shalot River. Well, I believe the greens and the Bermuda greens are, are as good or better than any greens in the area, um, considering the, the winter kill that uh, a lot of the courses have. shape of the course is very very good the layout of it is naturally which is uh, very nice it is challenging the uh, greens were very good and the fairways were excellent if you're anywhere between Myrtle Beach and Wilmington you need to bring the sticks here but bring your game to this signature Arnold Palmer design is another tribute to the king. Now, down the middle, Dougie is a nine handicapper who has played River's Edge before. But handyman Bobby is an 18 handicapper playing here for the first time. But it is a challenging course that you have to make precision hits. Which means you want to play it more than once. Yes, my score would have gone down because I know how the holes looked and played, which I would have played it a little differently. Yes, course management, I would say. In addition, River's Edge has an assortment of par threes that are unrivaled in this area. Well, I think not only the best looking par threes, but the, they're challenging par threes. And um, I don't think there are better par threes in, in the Sunset Beach. Brunswick County area. And I've played around uh, a number of courses. It's just, it's a beautiful par three. And Dougie took advantage with a birdie on the par three 12th hole. Well, it, that was just plain luck. <laughs> <laughs> 
Getting a good deal here requires no luck. East Coast Golf Management includes River's Edge in its PGA multi-round package that gets you high-end courses at a good rate. Check this website out or call your favorite golf package booking agent. This is a great place for a group event too. First, the 18th hole is a natural amphitheater for some final hole drama. And the food at the grill is not just bar food. Oh, huh. food was excellent. The server was excellent. Um, it couldn't have been any better. Those chicken tenders were moist and lightly breaded. The Reuben was spectacular, a great pre or post round meal. And the chicken salad sandwich was a definite thumbs up along with this Philly cheesesteak. So have a bite, take in the views, and get your game honed at River's Edge. We will have more on some of these holes here in future segments. Subscribe here on YouTube to see more. So River's Edge is right between Wilmington, North Carolina, and Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And it is definitely worth the ride and the views. And we thank you for joining us on our trip to Vietnam. We have more for you coming up in other shows. Thanks for joining us, and tweet us at UC Foodie TV. Cheers. Cheers.